dipped turd of it. <laughs> <laughs> But you've stayed solid. Tell, yeah. tell, me, tell me why. Um, why? Because Brexit is the most important issue in the whole world right now. And uh, if we lose on Brexit, I think it will be a massive defeat for all the things that people like us are interested in, which is defending freedom, defending democracy, uh, fighting back against the forces of political correctness, the forces of bureaucracy, all these kind of bad forces that are uh, abroad in the world. Um, Defending Brexit, I think, is is the front line in all of this stuff. And it's funny that you mention the SS because I am one of those people. I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm always really reluctant. You always mention the SS. I'm always really I'm really reluctant to use the word fascism and Nazism unless you're talking about actual fascists and actual Nazis. So I never use the word feminazi. I know you do. No offense. I I don't like it when. Words like Nazi and fascist are attached to people who aren't actually Nazi and fascist. But the closest I have ever come to using the word fascist is in relation to Romanos. They are the most unpleasant, authoritarian, anti-democratic, illiberal wankers. <laughs> really appreciate the seriousness of the situation we're in is that we have the reactionary middle classes marching in their thousands in the streets calling on the government to dispense with democratic mandate and to rule by dictator. that's a terrifying thing that's happened in the past we have the police last week calling on campaigners and journalists to tone down their brexit rhetoric lest anyone become whipped into a frenzy of anger with a political class that's a dangerous precedent we have MP saying, oh, we know you all voted for this thing, but we don't actually think it's a good thing, so we're not going to make it happen. That's a dangerous precedent that's, that we know from the past too. So uh, I feel like the great irony of Ramona's is that they go on and on about how people like us who support Brexit are far right and crazy and authoritarian and mental, when all those words are far better descriptions of them than they are of us. So I actually feel quite scared about the period we're living. I think we're living through a petty, bourgeois, reactionary, revolting assault on democracy and freedom, which people are talking about in this building right now, the new European and all those people. Mm. And I think we have to stand up to it in any way we can. I certainly have experienced um, horridness from, from the various <coughs> leading lights of the Ramona movement. I mean. I saw Andrew and Dennis in the corridor. I don't want to diss him because I think this is a friendly, friendly atmosphere. But they are quite under, underhand. And in a way that I don't think we are. And yeah. this has been demonstrated by, by a survey which, which, which showed that Remainers are much, much more intolerant of us than we are of them. For example, Remainers say, I will not, if, if my daughter were to marry a Brexiteer, I, I wouldn't have it, I just wouldn't have it. You know, it's, it's, it's a bit like the old days, people used to say, if, if, if my daughter married that, I, know, right. I just wouldn't do it. How do you explain that, that gulf of intolerance? That, you know, the thing is that they don't think that they are on the cusp of fascism. They actually think they're good people. Yeah. They think they're nice, they think they're decent, they think we're the scum of the earth. Because I think it's the self-righteousness. I think when you're that self-righteous and you're so convinced you're right on everything and you're so convinced everyone else is an idiot, that you have no space left for self-reflection or reason even. So I think they've jettisoned all of that, which is why I think one of the great liberal values is to always uh, entertain the possibility that you might be wrong. Yeah. Right? That's a really important thing to do. Always, you should spend your whole life with a sense of self-doubt in a way. Uh, that's you know, the beginnings of freedom of speech. The argument for open debate is all premised on the idea that maybe I'm wrong, maybe someone else is right, so let's have the debate out. They've completely lost connection with any idea about that. They are utterly convinced they're right. They're utterly convinced that people who voted for Brexit are stupid, xenophobic, uh, uh, racist, uneducated, idiotic plebs. I mean, they talk about these people in the most contemptible way imaginable. Um, and they think they're right. And you could really see that on the People's Vote demo in London a couple of weeks ago. The placards were astonishing. I saw so many, I was there taking photos and laughing at people. And you were on the on <laughs> stage talking? I was on stage at the pro-Brexit one. Yeah, yeah. the pro-Brexit one a week later, which was far more friendly, as you say. We were a friendlier bunch. 
But on the people's vote one, people's vote in Chrome Watts, of course, because really it's just a forced second referendum to try and demoralize the electorate. That's the longer description of it. Um, on this people's vote demo, there were plac one guy had a placard saying, we'll, we'll always be a part of Europe, you idiots. Trust me, I've got a geography degree. Another placard said, um, oh look, um, correctly spelt placards and, yeah. and correctly, you know, correct grammar on our placards. Isn't that surprising? It, you know, translated into we're clever and the rest of the country are a bunch of idiots. So there is this um, haughty disdain for anyone who disagrees with them, which is the majority of the country. And when you're in that position, when you have that kind of um, unfounded self-conviction that you are a super, super clever, wonderful, morally correct person, you just lose the capacity to make judgments and to reason and to engage in debate. And I think that's what's happened to Ramones. While we're on the theme of dissing Ramones, <laughs> <laughs> have you noticed 